you know, the unemployment system in Florida, as we as we know, as, as has been widely reported, w- was designed by Rick Scott when he was governor to make it so frustrating for people that they just give up on attempting to file. And that is still the case um, with a benefit as low as uh, two hundred seventy five dollars a week uh, as a maximum, which doesn't allow anybody to even survive. Um, it, it's insulting is the only word. It's insulting to Floridians. It's insulting to workers and families who are trying to just stay alive during this very difficult time, finding themselves unemployed uh, without a prospect of work through no fault of their own, just because the economy collapsed due to a pandemic. Uh, We've seen uh, the governor's office uh, run away from responsibility. Uh, We've seen the governor himself just basically blame people who are trying to work through the website and get their benefits, uh, seeing him blame them for their own situations uh, without any uh, without any empathy, without any understanding that um, it's really up to the, gov- the, the government of Florida to, to fix this. Um, our delegation and Democrats and the Florida Democratic Party have been pushing very hard. Um, uh, Commissioner uh, Nikki Freed has been among the most vocal advocates for Workers, her office has been finding new ways to ensure that farmers are getting their food out there, uh, people are able to eat. Um, it, it's really a, a challenging situation that is really just a, an abrogation of responsibility on the part of the governor. And there's no other way to say it. He's defensive. He's angry when you ask him about it. Um, uh, it same thing with hiding the, the actual uh, COVID data. Um, now we don't know the real extent of, of, of um uh, of infections in, in the state. Uh, reporting today shows that COVID was here in early February and no one knew. Uh, he knew. We weren't told. So there's so much there's so much hidden behind the scenes. There's so much that we're not being told that's not allowing us to actually help Floridians, uh, whether it's health-wise, uh, economically, with unemployment. Uh, we're really being left behind. And it, it's the Democrats who are fighting this and trying to bring all this to light so that we can uh, help our people. And that's really what, what we need to be doing in, in this in this time. Exactly. And I'll say thank goodness for these investigative reporters uh, who have called, the, called our state government out on some of these horrible things that they've done. Uh, personally, I know of, we have clients uh, that are in uh, assisted living centers. One of them we just found out she had she had COVID for several weeks before we were even told or notified about. This is not acceptable. And we found out about it. We can't go visit her, of course. We were allowed to finally talk with her via telephone. But you know, uh, you know, she she could could have passed away, you know, and we wouldn't even even know the situation, you know. And that's that's not acceptable. And we this is this is repeated throughout the state. And uh, when they tried to cover up. Where the, where the people were with COVID in the assisted living centers. So, and we know that that represents a large section of the infections that we've had here in Florida. But um, anyway, going on to a kind of related area there, where do you see uh, in this coming election, uh, where do you see us being able to put our resources forward and being able to help the uh, Democratic Party and people who want to bring some uh better changes to Florida and help improve our future here? Oh, well, this is an easy one. It's an easy one and a tough one. There are candidates up and down the ballot. And and what I can say is, you know, we always look at the the presidential race, which is key. Um, And I think this year we will finally be able to turn Florida blue after being frustrated uh, in previous past couple cycles. Um, but there are uh, candidates running uh, from the local level up and down the ballot. And I think where we can be the most helpful is to find that candidate that you believe in, that you want to support, candidates, plural, if you can, um, and just really jump in. Again, the, the, the campaign season is going to be bizarre this year because of COVID, and uh, who knows how that's going to unfold as the, as the year wears on. But uh, being able to phone bank, being able to work online, being able to raise money online, and I know that's a tough one right now because, because of the economy, but still that's important. 
and our, our candidates, candidates and campaigns run on money. So that's a key thing. If you're able to help in any way, that's great. If you can't do money, certainly get involved in other ways. Um, you know, I think the issues this year are really our issues. It's economy, it's health care, it's who is working for individuals and families, who is working, who is looking out for you. And that's really what this comes down to. Um, you know, Donald Trump famously said, you know, well, vote for him. What do you have to lose? Well, now we know we have 38 million jobs to lose. We have 100,000 Americans to lose. Um, and those numbers are just going to keep growing unless we stop him and stop this insanity. Um, and the only way we do that is to uh, elect Democrats. Uh, turning around the House in 2018 is what brought to light uh, so much. What's the word we were looking for? Uh, I want to say illegal activity, but I probably shouldn't say that. We brought to light so much chicanery in the administration. Um, uh, which is why uh, Trump was impeached. And so we need to continue in the name of transparency, uh, in the name of uh, uh, togetherness, in, in the name of really what's good for Floridians. Uh, we need to keep pushing with the Democrats and the Democratic agenda. And that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, our chapters are very engaged locally with their elected officials, with their with campaigns. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a great place and a great way to get involved. Um, you know, the good thing about our caucus, too, is while we do represent and are advocates for the LGBTQ plus community, that plus also includes allies. And we can't do it without uh, our allies and friends uh, across the state. So um, don't be uh, don't think that we're being exclusive. We want everybody to join us and everybody to help fighting for us because we're also fighting for everybody in the name of fairness and equality. OK, Stephen. We've got a, about five more minutes to go here, so I want to be able to summarize a lot of our th thoughts in the next few minutes. Uh, I know we, 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 we have a tough battle ahead of us yet here as LGBTQ plus and our allies. And just as you say, we, we need allies and we need to work with. And, and thank you for mentioning that we need to work with the other uh, major LGBTQ organizations, you know, HRC, Equality Florida and, and others, you know. So if you could summarize some of the areas where you think that the LGBTQ community can work together, you, I think we've already covered part of them there in the, for this legislation. Um, what are some other areas where you think that we might be able to uh, work together in, in candidates and, and the, and the uh, uh, process to get the people who are actually supporting our values and, and believe in equality, believe in, in fairness? and the working class people. You, you give me some thoughts in that area. Sure, sure. Well, you know, look, one of the things that we're trying to do uh, at this at our caucus is to expand, expand our universe. You know, we're, we're focused on diversity and inclusion. We're, you know, I think we need to start reaching out to the other caucuses within the party uh, and, uh, you know, beginning a dialogue with the, with the Black Caucus and the Hispanic Caucus and all the others. Uh, you know, we, we have so much more in common um, even though we're we're advocates for our own constituency, but we have so much more in common uh, than than it might seem on the surface, and we're all working in that direction. Same thing with the other uh, uh, advocacy groups uh, in the LGBTQ realm. Uh, you know, 95 percent, 98 percent of the time, 99 percent of the time, really, we're moving in the same direction, and we may have uh, uh, disagreements around um, uh, tactics. Uh, but certainly not about goals. Um, and I think once we start breaking down those barriers, um, which we've done, uh, we can we can continue to move forward together. So much of what we need to do is really just uh, awareness and visibility. Look, the talking points kind of write themselves. The reason for change, the reason for uh, a new leadership is in front of us every day. Um, turn on the television, turn on the radio, pick up a newspaper, open the website, uh, and you see the, the abject stupidity and idiocy <laughs> coming from uh, our leadership in Washington, which just disregards, uh, disregards human life, really, uh, as we're fighting for our, our lives here in, in COVID uh, or fighting for our lives in gun reform or whatever it may be. 
um, there are so many areas where we can all work together and, um, and have an impact. You know, I think that at its core, it's really just a matter of getting involved and whatever that means to you individually. Um, it doesn't have to be an intense effort. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Uh, if you can give an hour a day, an hour a week, that's great. That's necessary in any campaign, whatever it may be. Um, everybody always wants help, uh, and we are marching in the same direction uh, with all of our organizations, with all of our candidates, uh, and that's the focus that we need to have. It's, uh, you know, no November is just ahead of us right now, and um, we have the ability to change the direction of Florida, to change the direction of the country by uh, working together and electing Democrats. Excellent, Stephen. And this uh, you have you've summarized very well there. I want to thank you for being with us today here. We have we have got a we we really appreciate this talk, and uh, good luck here. We we've got a lot of work to do as the LGBTQ plus community. And thank you again. And give me in about twenty seconds here your last closing last closing thoughts you may have. <laughs> My last thoughts are uh, to uh, keep pushing, keep working. Uh, reach out to our caucus. We'd love to have everyone involved. You can find more information about us at uh, www.lgbtqdems.org. That's our website. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter at those uh, sites, at those names as well, those handles as well. So um, really, we want help. We want to hear what you have to say. We want your engagement, and we want to work together. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for listening, and we have, hope you have enjoyed today's discussion. This has been Coastal Progressive and Rainbow Forum on Society Bites Radio, and I've been your host, Steve Ryan.